I'll shoot. Don't you know you can't shoot husbands without a license? License or no license, husbands who don't come home for dinner should be shot. Oh. Is that all I get? Code. McReynolds on legal procedure. That must be a fascinating book. Ah, and dear old Chief Justice Marshall. I don't mind you having a legal career, Phyllis, but must you sleep with it? Uh-huh. Being an attorney is like anything else. You have to keep plugging to be a success. Mm-hmm. I, uh, met an old friend tonight. Policeman or crook? Joe Link. Remember him? Duke Martindale, you listen to me. If you've agreed to do any detective work for Joe Link or any other crook, you can just put your clothes back on again and sneak right out of here. I'm through. <laughs> you certainly come to conclusions, but you're all wrong, honey. You know I wouldn't break my promise to you. We're in the money, Duke. We don't have to get mixed up in any more criminal cases, either of us. That's exactly what I told Joe Link. And it took you all evening to tell him that. Well, he'd had a lot of cocktails, and he kept blabbering about some girl being framed for murder. Girl? Framed for murder? Mm-hmm. Uh, what kind of a girl was she? Well, she's no angel, but she isn't guilty of murder. She is being railroaded. Well, why talk about it? We're not interested in getting mixed up in any more dirty criminal cases. Certainly not. Uh, who's the girl? Hmm? Oh, Leela Bostwick. Leela Bostwick. How do you do, Miss Bostwick? Who are you? And what do you want? I'm Helen White of the Chronicle. I've asked a special permission to do a feature article about you. I'm not talking to reporters. But I'm not just another reporter. I'm your friend, dear. You can talk to me in confidence. As one woman to another. In front of that watchdog? Would you mind leaving us alone for a few minutes? If you really want to be my friend, you'll do something for me. Of course, dear. You're going to help me get out of here. Break jail? You're mad. I will be if I stay here another day. But if you try to escape, they'll... They'll what? Give me another death sentence? You're going to help me to get out of here. And I'm going to get the person who put me in. Give me your reporter's pass. And I'll want that hat and coat. No, please. I'll... Shh. Be quiet. Don't make a sound. I've been waiting for this chance. I'm desperate and I've got a gun. Isn't she the girl who's in jail for murdering Judge Leander Harding? What'd you say, Toots? Leela Bostwick. Isn't she the girl who murdered Judge Leander Harding? That's what the jury said. But, uh... Joe Link has a witness who says she, she was framed. A boy by the name of Muller. Why doesn't Muller come forward and testify? Because, my dear counselor, it isn't ethical to walk into court and testify what he saw while he himself came there to burglarize the place. So he keeps quiet and lets an innocent girl go to the chair. Just like a man. Oh, I get excited. We're not interested in criminals anymore. Only, uh... Only a nice, clean, profitable, civil cases. Hand over my pillow, Angel. Now it's on my conscience and I won't be able to sleep. Then you will help me with the case? Oh, so you did take it after all. Uh, well, well uh, I've got a conscience, too. I do let myself get talked into these things. That's what you uh, get for marrying a private detective, darling. Uh -oh. What apartment is Martin Dell in? I'm sorry, Mr. Martindale left orders not to disturb him. He's retired. I said, what apartment does Martindale live in? Um, 316.
insists on seeing me. What does he want? I'm afraid he's intoxicated. I'll get rid of him. You? You'll not get rid of anyone connected with that case until we get their evidence. Remind me to have a key made for you, will you, Joe? The clerk downstairs is allergic to guns. Cigarette? What's the matter? You never refused a cigarette before in your life. Why, he's sick. Look at his face. Oh, that's prison bleach. He spent a lot of time inside. You're too smart for your own good, Duke. Is that what you've come up here to tell me? No, you've got to get that Mueller kid out of jail right now, tonight. What kid? Pinky Muller kid who's got the lowdown on the Harding murder. Somebody must have heard him spill it to me when we were in jail together. I told you I'd look into that case tomorrow. There ain't gonna be no tomorrow. We'll get him, even in jail. They must have heard me wising you up. What makes you think that somebody overheard you talking to me? Same thing that makes her think I'm sick. Call it up. Never mind, Phil. The doctor won't do him any good. He was overheard, all right. They put two bullets in him to prove it. Are you upset, honey? Oh, I'm sorry. What about Muller? I'll attend to that right away. Who could have done this, Duke? Your guess is as good as mine. Maybe the police would know. Hadn't you better call them? Uh, no, no, not yet, not yet. We've got to report this, Duke. Well, I'll report it at headquarters when I get Muller out on bail. First, uh, first let's see if we can find any leads. Come on, Toots. See what you can find on that, Phil. What would Leela Bostrick's name and address be doing here? Well, Joe probably hoped to sell her the information he'd get from Pinky Muller. She'd pay big dough to beat the rap for killing Judge Harding. Why should anyone want to murder Judge Harding? I understand murdering some judges. But old Harding was on the level. Maybe that's the answer. See, sir? Never mind whom do I wish to see, and don't get any bells. I'll announce myself to whom when I walk in on him. Very well, officer. Duke, don't you think we'd better call the police? Oh, there's plenty of time. Besides, I'd hate to wake up my good friend, Brent. But we've got to tell him. We'll get around to it. There are laws against things like this, you know. Ah, the legal mind at work. Duke, sometimes you can be positively exasperating. Can't you take this seriously? I am. This is business for a private detective, Duke Martindale. If he cracks the case, he gets the headlines and the publicity. It's good for business. The police crack the case. Um, were you expecting a client at this hour? Oh, it must be Cousin Annie. Oh, no, it isn't. She has her own key. Unless she lost it. I have it. Let's open the door and find out. No, don't. Why not? Oh, that, uh, that's exactly why we'd better open the door. Do, do you know how things always go wrong when you don't take my advice? Uh, yes. And I know how wrong things can go for anyone that's caught trying to cover up a murder. I suppose it's a murder out there. Oh. 
Well, if uh, that's all you were afraid of. Someone, Duke? Well, I see you've got company already. Say, your taste is improving. Phyllis, allow me to present Detective Sergeant Brett. My wife, Brett. How do you do, Sergeant? So you're Mrs. Martindale. You seem surprised. I am. After hearing what a clever lawyer you are, I expected something a little more on the mental side. If you know what I mean. Oh, you flatter me. Brent's the type who can't even pay a compliment without making you resent it. Oh, but I don't resent it. Well, now that you've satisfied your curiosity concerning Mrs. Martindale's appearance... Well, that's not all I'm curious about. Aren't you going to ask us in? Us? Yeah, me and Donahoe. What is this? Criminal investigation. Of what? A phone call from a cab driver. About a man he delivered to this address. Is there a law against delivering a man to this address? No. Only this mug left something that belonged to him in the cab. What? Blood. He wasn't shot through the heart. Maybe his heart was in his mouth. Call Dr. Grayson and tell him to send out a medical examiner. We haven't got time to wait for that. Where do you think you're going? Well, I was leaving for headquarters when you barged in. We've always had a phone service to headquarters. I hadn't you heard. Oh, I don't trust these newfangled inventions. I notice you're not carrying any bow and arrow. Funny. Joe dead in here and you meeting us at the door with that in your hand. And it's funny the way you came right up here. I suppose the taxi driver knew exactly who Joe was visiting in this big apartment house? Yeah, sure. Maybe Mr. Link talked about you when he was in the cab. Joe is, or was, very talkative. By the way, what did he have to talk about this time of night? Mr. Link came to see me. Can't say that I blame him. Let's cut out the games, Duke. What did he want? My dear Sergeant, I'm an attorney. And whatever a client has to say is strictly between ourselves. Now, uh, you wouldn't want me to be unethical, would you? Darling, if we're going to headquarters, hadn't we better be getting dressed? If the Sergeant will pardon us. <clears throat> Your friend is rather charming. Mm-hmm. He always says, pardon me, before he cuts your throat. I apologize for dragging you into this, dear. Don't be silly. Those dog cases were beginning to bore me. Now that I've uh, met Sergeant Brent, this is going to be anything but boring. <clears throat> you don't know that bloodhound out there. We were enemies on the force, and he carries a grudge like an Indian. That's why I resigned. Then why don't you quit antagonizing him and smoke the peace pipe? That tightwad won't smoke. Not while chewing gum is cheaper. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And whoever put those bullets so neatly into Joe was no amateur with a gun. No, I don't think Sergeant Brent's the killer. There's something honest and simple about him. Let's leave it at simple. And he has a nice quality of sincerity. Say, what else has he got that I haven't got? Dignity, you clown. Dignity. Right. Where's my other shoe, darling? In your hand, you fool. Huh? Oh. There's one thing I will say for that guy. He's the best marksman in the department. Oh, you? you get out of my way. We've got to do some pretty quick planning. Might be the last chance we have. Our lives might depend on it. You mean Joe Link was killed for knowing too much? And the other boy's in danger for knowing too much. Well, let's check the angle he was shot from. Get over here. Back a little more. Back. And the little we know might be too much. Why is course to pursue is to remain silent. Spoken like a true attorney. No matter how tough they get at headquarters, we dummy up. Oh, I don't think Sergeant Brent's likely to get very tough. You'll soon find out. Now hold your gun on me from that angle. Be careful, don't shoot. I will. Oh. Don't have 
gun. Did she hurt him? No, I shot the gun up in the air. Oh. If you two want to wrestle, I'll get you a mask. This is my cousin, Miss Lowell. Sergeant Brent. How do you do, Sergeant? Lady, I'm Sergeant Brent. Oh, hello. Come on, Andy. We'll let these gentlemen go on with their little games. Come on. What are you two fellas up to? We were merely checking the angle on those bullets in Joe. Apparently trying to prove that I shot him while dangling from a chandelier. That's an idea, Abe. Where did you shoot him from? Well, if you ask him, he'll tell you he was shot before he came here. Maybe. Only I happen to know you were with him before he came here. With him all evening. Oh, well, then you want to know I left him sitting on the bench waiting for a bus. Yeah. Yeah. That's an idea. You could have driven around and shot him while he sat there. Maybe that's what he came up here to take care of. Very clever, Hawkshaw, Brent. Mm -hmm. Now, this is just the angle from a passing car. Here. If you take this as an illustration... You... No, I'm, uh, I'm not that good enough marksman, Brent. But you are. It gives me an idea. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That line won't get you very far at headquarters, Duke. You've got a lot of explaining to do. Me explain? Uh -huh. I'll leave that to my attorney. Hey, what's wrong? There's nothing wrong. Duke's been playing cops and robbers again. Cops and robbers? Isn't he a little too old for that? Not the way Duke Martindale plays. If you win, you get a headline on the front page. And if you lose? If you lose, you get a paragraph in the obituary columns. Obituary columns? <laughs> Won't he be proud? Hi-ho. Ready, darling? Ah, I'll get my hat. Donahoe, you stay here and mind the body. Oh, in that case, Annie, will you stay and mind the apartment? Me with him? No, with him. Oh, that's different. Well, good night, Annie. Thanks for staying up. Will you be back soon? I wouldn't count on that. Breakfast today, Annie, I'll have ham and eggs. Come on, folks, time to the wait. Make yourself at home. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Attention all cars. Attention all cars. Stand by for general order number 56. Lila Boxwood, age 24, 5 feet, 2 inches, red hair, last seen wearing oversized coat and hat. Escaped from county jail. Caution, she may be dangerous. Let him in. Hello, Duke. Hello, Skipper. This is Bob Dale. What brings you here? They want to report a murder. I found Jill Lincoln in her apartment shot to death. You've got a short memory, Brent. Why don't you tell him the rest of it? He died in our apartment, Captain, but he wasn't shot there. Hawkshaw here trailed him to my apartment through some blood that Joe left in the cab on his way up to see me. Well, what do you want to see about, Duke? Well, I... I don't know. He died before he could talk. I'll bet he did. And don't think you're going to get away with that story about being on your way to headquarters when we barged in. Oh, but we were. I want to see a boy named Muller, who's being held on suspicion of burglary. Well, that's different. Are you his counsel, Mrs. Martindale? Yes, I am. What's the connection between this kid and the murdered man found in your apartment? Oh, is there a connection between the two, Captain? How the dickens should I know? Muller boy was picked up yesterday by a prowl car, high class residential district. When they started to question him, he tried to get away, admitted criminal record, held for investigation. Yeah. Well, no reason why he shouldn't see his attorney. I guess not. But if there's any connection between this kid and the murder, Mrs. Martindale, I'd advise you to tell us. Why, Sergeant, do you think I'd hold anything back from the police? No, ma'am. Only. If you listen to him, you're liable to wind up in trouble. And if she listens to you, she's liable to get very, very bored. Why, you, I... Cut it out, you two. Come along.
Go over to Muller. Cut him down, quick! Better get Dr. Grayson. And hurry, he's still breathing. Leave him alone and let Dr. comes. What are you doing on Artificial respiration. That's too rough on a dying kid. You talk like you wanted him to die. So do you. Let him alone. He's handled suicides before. This may not be a suicide. Do you mean murder? Mrs. Martindale. He was here all alone. Nobody could have gotten to him. Nobody except the members of your department. She's right, Captain. Well, brother, if you're such a hot detective, let's see you get busy and start solving the great headquarters murder case. Mrs. Martindale? Dr. Grayson. How do you? Turn him over here. Turn him over there, will you? Let me see. Just a second now. He's got it now. Thank God. His heart's still beating. Thanks to your first aid. A shot of adrenaline will probably bring him back. I wouldn't bet on that. My friend here is a chronic pessimist. Probably due to eropagy. A common digestive disturbance with gum chewers who are also lip smackers. Sergeant, would you mind going down to the hospital ward? I have a fever patient down there who needs a wet blanket. And you're afflicted with wisecrack eaters. Sergeant, for once you were right. Yeah, so was Joe. We got here too late. Did Joe tip you off this is going to happen? I'm not saying. Whatever you're saying goes down in black and white. I have to ask you to come up to the records division. Give us a formal statement, Duke. How about it, Counselor? It's your party, Duke. You got yourself into it. Uh, I'll wait for you in the captain's office, if he doesn't mind. Looking for something, Mrs. Martindale? Why, yes. Something you don't happen to have, Sergeant. A match. Say, even though I don't smoke, I still carry matches for those who do. Duke said something about an old quarrel between you two. You're a big man, Sergeant. Why don't you shake hands and forget it? Sorry, Mrs. Martindale. I'd do almost anything else for you. But after the cracks he made tonight about my being involved in these murders, you will have to shake first. You made the same cracks about him. Well, I guess it's no use. Will you see me do a cab? I thought you were going to stay here and wait for Duke. No, I think I'll run on ahead. If I have to spend the night downtown, I much prefer a hotel. Okay. Well, sit down, Duke. Well, let's have a little talk. Go ahead. I have a hunch you know more than you told me. Any reason we can't work together? I'm afraid there is, Skipper. Why? Well, you see, anything I tell you has to become the property of the entire police department, including the great Sergeant Brent. 
Oh, you got Brent all wrong, Duke. Ah, uh, he's a good officer, and so are you when you're here. I told you then, Skipper, that headquarters wasn't big enough to hold the both of us, and that still goes. Besides, this is my case. Let him go out and get a murder case of his own. Oh, come on, Duke. Be big. Will you tell Mr. Kisling I'd like to speak with him, please? I'm sorry, but the proprietor doesn't see anyone this late. Unless he wants to. Tell him it's about Leela Bostwick. I'll see what Mr. Kisling says. Oh, come in, Mr. Martindale. Brings you out at this late hour. I'm the new attorney for Miss Leela Bostwick. Well, won't you sit down? Thank you. I'm afraid you're taking a rather hopeless case. But I'm ready to do anything I can for Miss Bostwick. You are? Of course. We were, well, we were almost engaged once, and she still means a great deal to me. She sued you for a very large amount of money. Yes, yeah, she talked me into a business deal and then blamed me when it failed. However, I lost far more than she did, but it was a clear case in my favor. You know, Judge Harding's reputation, not even his closest relative could sway him. But Leela couldn't be convinced. If there's anything I can do, you can call on me to the limit. Well, you can tell me what you know about the shooting of Judge Harding. Now, as I recall, there was only one witness of any real importance. The judge's secretary. Hester Engel, I believe. By the way, I understand your husband, Duke Martindale, is a private detective now. Yes, he was very anxious to come tonight, but he was tied up in a murder case and couldn't get away. Not the headlines for tracking down the killer of Judge Harding. Oh, no, that belongs to Daddy. What are you raving about, Duke? The Harding case is dead. We've got a case and a conviction against Leela Bostwick. You have? Sure. That isn't her story. I, uh, I dug into the files tonight, uh, Skipper, and uh, run across a copy of Leela Bostwick's affidavit. Relax, and I'll read it to you. I, Leela Bostwick, make the following statement of my own free will without coercion or promise of any kind. On the night of June 10th last, I went to Judge Harding's home to tell him some things that the attorneys wouldn't let me say on the witness stand that day. I knew that I'd be coming back late and alone, and after one experience of being held up, I always carry a gun in my handbag. When I got to George Harding's home, I was refused admittance by his secretary, Miss Engel. Judge Harding is out. He is not. I saw him at an upstairs window. I'm sorry, but you still can't see him tonight. And why not? He's been working all day on a big case, and he's dictating his decision now. He can't be disturbed. That's my case, and I've got to talk to him tonight before he makes his decision. Indeed. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Bostwick. You'll have to wait until you see him in court. Oh, will I? That's as far as Leela Bostwick's story goes. Esther Engels picks up from there. I, Hester Engel, secretary to the late Judge Harding, being duly sworn, depose as follows. Get up. Come on, get up. Judge Harding. Oh, Judge Harding. What's happened? What's Miss Bostwick doing here? She was going to tell you how to decide her case. I tried to stop her, and she started up the stairs and fell. You better call an ambulance. If we do, it'll mean publicity. Yes. The newspapers would say the girl must have had a personal claim on me, coming here at this hour. I'll get Dr. Ross from down the street. He can be trusted. And that's that. It's no use, Duke. The girl claimed she was unconscious when the judge was killed. But the bullet came from her gun, and our experts proved it. Well, suppose, uh, suppose somebody else fired the gun. Uh, who? There was no one there. But Hester Engel, she wouldn't kill her boss. I gave her a home and treated her like a daughter. Oh, she lived there, eh? Yeah. Well, then she, she might have had a jealous boyfriend. Boyfriend? Yeah. <laughs> if you think there's anything from that angle, Take a run over to the Tiverton apartment. I'll take your word for it, Skipper. See you later.
Sergeant Brent talking. What do you want now, Duke? I just wanted to be sure where you were. If you hadn't answered so quickly, I might have thought that you were the marksman who just tried to take a shot at me from the top of headquarters. Why, you are... residence. No, Duke. Phil hasn't returned or called. Shall I give her any message? Yes. Tell her that I'm going to get an attorney that won't walk out on me. By the way, uh, Annie, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, Duke. Oh, uh, I mean, uh, everything is the same as when you left. You'll just be sure I have at least one cigar left when I get home. Yes, Duke. Goodbye. Wait for me, Mike. I'm a friend of Miss Engels. I've got to see her. You can't. She's very ill. But it's most important. The doctor's orders are that Miss Engels is not to see anyone. Oh, very well. Tell her I'll be back in the morning. Telegraph. Shall I bring it up? No. Throw it in the ocean and jump in after it.
if I was only Houdini. your lights, Mike, and follow that cab. Taxi, miss? Uh, where to, miss? The Cortez Hotel. Do you know where it is? Oh, yes, miss. On 74th Street. Hey, miss, haven't I driven you before? Aren't you a friend of Mr. Kisling's, the owner of the Cortez Hotel? No, you haven't driven me before. And I'm not a friend of Guy Kisling's. Something wrong, miss? I think we're being followed. You don't see any headlights behind us. Step on it, Mike. Don't lose it. There is a car following us. There goes a woman. Get her and bring her in with the stolen cab. I've got a permit for that. Before you've got a permit to steal taxi cabs, too. Come on, get in there. Now, wait a minute. You don't know who I am. I don't care who you are. If you're the mayor himself, you're going to headquarters. Come on. Captain Newton isn't going to promote you for bringing me in. You can tell him about that the next time you have tea. Do you mind if I change my hat? Get his hat. Come on. <laughs> That's good. Claimed to have influence with the captain, did he? Well, we'll see about that. Who was the woman with him? She looked like that escaped prisoner. She had on a floppy hat and a coat two sizes too large for her. Maloney's bringing her in with the stolen cab. Send in Duke Martindale. So I can't book him without being sued for false arrest. We'll see about that, too. 
Where's Captain Newton? So you caught him with a stolen cab, huh? Yeah. Good work, Jackson. Isn't it funny the way things work out? A little while ago, you were making a monkey out of me. And now you're the monkey. I got you cold on a charge of grand theft. And that's not all. Now look here, Brent, I can explain everything. All right, sweetheart. Start explaining about the woman you had in your cab. Oh. Oh, well, you know how those things are, Sergeant. Yeah. Your wife would like to know about that, too. Quit stalling. You know it's a felony to wait an escaped criminal? Escaped criminal? Huh. I suppose you're going to tell me that the woman in my cab was Jesse James in disguise. Not Jesse James, but the runaway girl, Leela Bostwick. Leela Bostwick? That's impossible. She's in the county jail. And I suppose you didn't know she escaped tonight? No, I didn't. <laughs> she had on a floppy hat and a stolen overcoat. That was the girl streaking away from your cab, all right. You're crazy. That was Hester Engel in my cab. I picked her up in her apartment. You'll have to lie better than that. Hester's a much older girl than the one in your cab, and she's not a redhead. He ought to know. He's seen Miss Engel in court often enough. Look, Duke, what are you trying to pull on us? Well, maybe it wasn't Miss Engel. I, I couldn't be sure. I never met her before. I don't know what your game is, Duke, but you're not getting away with it. I've got the woman, Chief. Gave me quite a chase. You caught her? Good work. Send a report to the county prison and march her right in here. Now we'll find out whether the woman with you is Leela Boswick or Hester Engel. And either way, brother, you're on a spot. Here you are, Sarge. She gave me quite a race of it, but I got her all right. Let her go. What are you doing here, Mrs. Martindale? It was Little Boy Blue's idea. Dunlap here told me to catch her, so I brung her in with the stolen cab. Dunlap told you to catch this woman? Sure he did. I chase her around the corner and she ain't there. I think she's made her getaway and I start back. Then I see her duck out of a doorway and she's doing at least 50. 40, officer. She's doing 40. I mean, I finally catch her and here we are. What did you run for? Exercise. Running is fine for the hips. You should try it sometime. Answer me. Is there some new law against running, Sergeant? Well, my friend, I'm afraid that sort of blows up your little game. Unless you think it's a felony for a man to harbor his own wife. In your case, yes. I still don't think she was the woman you had in your cab. That isn't very pretty, Sergeant. But I caught her myself. Or oh, dry up. If she's too smart for me, she could pull anything over on you. I still got plenty of charges against you, Duke. You're going into a nice, comfortable cell till we get all these murders cleared up. I'd probably die of old age. Dunlap, book him on a charge of auto grand theft. I'd hate to see you get into trouble, Sergeant. I'd advise you not to book him for that. Why? He stole a cab, didn't he? Supposing he was driving it with the consent of the owners. You can't prove that. The defense doesn't have to prove anything. The burden of proof is on the prosecution. And if you think the taxi company is going to prosecute one of its best customers... All right, all right. I book him for uh, driving a hack without a license. Show me a driver's license, dear. Hope I've got it. Now, wait a minute. You stop trying to confuse the issue. Well, then stop trying to frame me. She's shown you that I've got a perfectly legal right to drive a cab, hasn't she? At 50 miles an hour in a 25-mile zone? Oh, then all you've got against him is a charge for speeding. Is that so? What about driving passengers for hire without a chauffeur's license? Sergeant, since your own men testify I was the only passenger in the cab driven by my husband, you cannot charge him with carrying passengers for hire. And the possible lack of a hack driver's license is more than compensated for by a possible existence of a marriage license. In other words, a husband does not require a taxi driver's license to chauffeur his own wife around town any more than he requires a taxi cab to take his family for a Sunday drive. And as my husband's counsel... That's enough. That's enough. Now, will you please get your husband out of here before you got me apologizing to you? Darling, this party's getting awfully dull. Let's go home. Good night. No hard feelings, I hope. My gun, if you don't mind. Oh. Thank you. Oh, uh, Sergeant, thanks for a very pleasant evening. You must come up and see us sometime. And uh, don't forget to bring the children. Good night. Come, dear. Here's a cab. Let's use this one. Ah, uh -uh, mustn't steal. Might get the habit. Remember, Sergeant Brent doesn't like it. Oh, what's the difference? I've got a smart attorney, haven't I? And she's reminding you it's again the law. Anyway, since when do you object to walk? I don't. Just object to being shot at. Oh, shot at? Oh. Say, that's my cab. Some guy about your size swiped it an hour ago. Yeah. I was just going in the police station to sign a complaint. Well, what have we got to complain about? You've got the cab back, haven't you? Here's your hat and two passengers to go with it. Oh, 
Thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you, sir. Marlboro Hotel, and don't spare the horses. Yes, sir. Excursion race, too. Who shot us? I uh, don't know, but I've got an idea. You're not thinking of Brent. No, but I'd be willing to bet my shirt that he knows something about us. Well, before the night's over, I'll prove to you you're wrong. I wish you'd quit defending that so-and-so. Anyway, you're not going to prove anything, Angel Face. From now on, you're not taking any more chances. You're out of this game. Oh, so my great big strapping he-man can take care of himself? Where would you be now if I hadn't kept a motherly interest on you? It's so motherly about running the legs off a patrolman. I will do it again, darling, not without my low heels. Anyway, don't worry about me. I'm not taking any chances. No, no, of course not. Just sitting in a game where two players have been killed tonight, your husband threatened. No, you're not taking any chances. Now, here's a nice, quiet hotel where you won't be annoyed by cops, robbers, or murderers. I want you to stay here and catch 40 winks. And what'll you be catching? Cold? Oh, jokes. No, there's just another angle that I want to look into. What's that? Well, I might be able to prevent another shooting tonight. I've changed my mind about going in. I'm going with you. Oh, no, you're not. You're going in there if I had to carry you in. You wouldn't dare. Oh, wouldn't I? <laughs> I don't wait to be down. But you'll be sorry for this, you monster. <laughs> Taxi! Mr. Kisling, Mr. Martin Bell said to see him. Oh, I couldn't disturb Mr. Kisling at this hour, sir. Oh, that's too bad, because one of us is going to have to. Pardon me, where do you think you're going? To visit Mr. Kisling. Why, hello, Duke. Hello, Kisling. What's on your mind? Oh, nothing in particular. Just wondered if you were still alive. Didn't you expect me to be? Well, I wasn't sure. I ran across a girl who was on her way over here to get you. Leela Bostwick? Yeah. I heard she broke out of jail. Uh, she, uh, she got it in for you, Kisling. She, uh, blames you for all her troubles. I know. Never try to help a woman, Duke. They didn't know the meaning of the word gratitude. Well, anyway, you'd better be on your guard against Leela Bostwick. About, uh, five foot four, nice slim figure. Yes, I know what she looked like. When last seen, was wearing a big overcoat and a floppy face-hiding hat. Exactly like this. Why didn't you tell me she was here? Why don't you play smart, Duke? Let's say that hat belongs to a girlfriend of mine. Sorry, Kisley. I can't overlook any incriminating evidence when I'm working on a case. Well, then, work on the case for me. I'll pay you twice the money you're getting from any other client. Sorry again, can't change horses in midstream. Why not? Well, for one thing, I can't get in touch with my client. He's dead. Now, where's the girl? In there. Now, Duke, since you're so interested in my safety, perhaps I should increase my insurance. Not a bad idea. Sit down. Take it easy. Miss Engel, Miss Engel, 
Mm. Hello, police headquarters. Send an ambulance to the Tiffenden apartment. Mm. And hurry, a woman's been badly hurt. That's right, apartment 218. Quickly. Hester, Hester, can you hear me? Yes. Listen, who did this to you? I don't know. You're trying to cover someone, Hester. You wouldn't let two strangers into your apartment late at night. You've got to tell me, Hester. Don't you want the guilty men brought to justice? Hello. Certainly, send her right up. And I'm after anyone else. She wants to see me on a personal business. Don't you, dear? As a matter of fact, I came to see Mr. Kissling about the Lila Foster case. But you don't know anything about that. I, I never discuss the cases with my wife. <laughs> of course you do, darling. My husband tells me everything. There's no use acting so smart, Phil. Mr. Kissling is very well pleased with his present attorney, and there's no chance of getting his business. So just be your sweet self and run along. Ouch. Run along when I've just got enough evidence to almost solve this? Stop kidding, Phil. You wouldn't go to the hotel like I told you, would you? No. No, you had to follow me up here to tell me that you haven't learned anything. Oh, but I have. I've learned so much that you can go ahead and rest the men I saw coming out of Miss Engel's apartment this evening. You remember the woman, Mr. Kissling? You told me she was some sort of uh, court clerk or something. You were vague about it. I couldn't be definite. I believe I had only one meeting with Miss Hester Engel. Aren't you mistaken, Mr. Kissling? Really, Mrs. Martindale. Now, Mr. Kissling, isn't it true that you knew Miss Engel very well? Too well for her own good? Mrs. Martindale, are you insinuating? I'm insinuating nothing. I thought I recognized your voice when I came to Miss Engel's apartment tonight and you wouldn't let me in. Now I know it was your voice. You're mistaken. But Miss Engel's not mistaken. She told me you were there. In fact, she told me the whole story. All right, Mrs. Martindale, since you know so much, suppose you tell me why a woman like Hester should appeal to me. Because you could use her to your own advantage. Advance information on how Judge Harding was going to decide Leela Boswick's lawsuit against you. And when Hester told you the case was going against you, that you were going to lose all your money and perhaps go to jail, then your last hope was to intimidate the judge. You went to his home that night, Well, Judge Harding, this is very interesting. Miss Bostwick slipped and fell on the stairway. And I don't like your insinuations. And I don't like finding my opponent and my judge in such a compromising situation either. She was no more welcome here than you are. I'm sorry if I'm intruding on your judicial privacy. <laughs> she seriously hurt? I don't think so. Well, that's too bad. Is there anything I can do to help? No. Miss Engel has gone for a doctor. Well, let's leave the plenty of alone until he gets here. I want to have a look at you. I don't discuss my cases out of court. We'll discuss this one. I don't think you can stand a scandal right now. I'll discuss it in court tomorrow, when I have you indicted for attempted blackmail.
and you got away with it. Not even Hester Engel suspected you when you changed your stenographic notes, so that it appeared the judge had decided the case in your favor. But yesterday, you discovered that young burglar had told his story to his cellmate, Joe Link. Their talk was overheard by someone your influence had gotten into headquarters. So you started out to eliminate everyone who knew of your connection with the Harding case, including Hester Engel. Did Hester tell you all that? She has quite an imagination. Who else heard this story? No one. After you and your doctor friend had taken care of her so well, she died in my arms. Well, Duke, there's your case. What are you waiting for? Because the rat you so aptly described a moment ago was holding a gun on me. Too bad I ducked before you had a chance to shoot me. Are you all through, Mrs. Martindale? Well, then how would you like to join your husband on a nice drive to see you last sunrise? You wouldn't. Take it easy. I can't let you go on telling that story. It might damage my reputation. Have Bill bring my car to the freight elevator. We'll be right down. I'm sorry, darling. Now I can see why you want to keep me from talking. Oh, that's very touching. Old-fashioned, aren't we? I admire you for it. Besides, it'll make things much easier. You two will go with me. If you make a break, the doctor will see that Mrs. Martindale suffers the consequences. And don't think I won't. Considering what happened to Joe Link and young Muller, that last remark seems hardly necessary. say she had a confession on the Harding case. That can fix your two friends over here. Get rid of them. Come on, you. What took you so long? I couldn't get here any sooner. And besides, you told me I was the only one you wanted to help do clear up the case. You'll find Leela Bostwick in there, gagged and tied. So you had us covered all the time. Hey, why didn't you tell me? But, darling, you never asked me. Wait till I get you alone. You're in the clear on that murder charge. Yes, I heard everything. Practically acquitted. But who are you? Oh, she's the attorney who broke the case. And him? He thinks he's a private detective. I don't know how to thank you. Don't try, Leela. I didn't know there were two people in the world like you who risked their lives for a stranger. Oh, I think nothing of it. We do it all the time. Yeah, and I hope you keep right on doing it. Because when the law of averages catches up with you, wise guy, I'm going to marry your widow. Is that so? Oh, by the way, this telegram came for you today at headquarters. Thanks. Let's go. It's for me, darling. <clears throat> it's private. Bad news? Uh, no, oh, no, no, just, uh, <laughs> just business. Papa's business. not going to take any more of those naughty criminal cases. Oh, no, my love. <laughs> <laughs> 